Okay, so hi all. Um, in this video, we're going to continue um, our, or we're going to answer our example, which we have cut in the last video. That is, we're going to answer now this example number four. That is, P or not Q implies R. Or if P or not Q, then R. So let's make use of a an app that, that can show this. Um, let's answer this one by one. Okay, so that we can answer um, this part. So this is P or not Q implies r um notice we have eight rows this time because that's why that's because uh, we have three variables here we have p q and r so in essence why do we have three of uh, three or uh, rather eight rows because we need to consider three combinations this time not only two combinations that is t t t f f t and f f we need to con consider t t t t t f t f t t f f uh and, and and others ftt ftf and such so how do we do that um what if the the first all of them are all true um what if all of them are all true um consider all of them becoming true so therefore what we have is all of them are true so we have this is what the first combination next is the second combination is that um, first two are true, the last one is false. Next, we have true, false, the last one is true. And we have true, false, false. Actually, we're considering all the combinations of the truth values of the three propositions. Now, looking at this in this way, we can see actually a pattern arising. Um, you can see that the first in the first proposition it's all true, and then divided by two we have true, true, false, false, and then divided again by two we have true, false, true, false. So notice the combination uh, or the or the what do call that the the pattern arising from all of these. Okay, we could also do that in the down in the in the last last um last four rows. So we are all true here in the P. What I want to do is to write them all false there. False, false, false. And then we're going to write here two truths, true, true, false, false. And then we're going to write lastly, true, false, and then true, false. Okay, now notice here that we have considered everything, but we can see that there's a pattern arising. Um, notice that we have eight um, eight rows. The first divided by two, we have four. So first four is true. Second four is false. Um, divide four again by two, we have true, false, true, false. Divide two by two, so we have one. True, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and so on. So you can see that we have a pattern arising from this combinations of stuff. First row, so again, we need to take this. Um, not P or not, or rather, sorry, P or not Q implies R. So we need this very smallest component first. That's not Q. So notice or put yourselves in, two, in Q here. So we're, we're going to flip all the truth values um, so that to get the not Q. So we have what we have is false because it's true here. True here it says false again. We have false, therefore it's true. We have false, therefore it's true. Then we have false here. Uh, false, another false here. We also have true, and then lastly true. So what we have is this value. So false, false, true, true, false, false, true. Sorry for my pen, it's quite lagging. So that's why it's it looks like lagged. Okay, next is we need to consider P or not Q. So we're now taking it one step, one step at a time. So we have P or not Q. So we're going to um, consider P here, the first column and the fourth column, which is not Q. And we're going to get the con the disjunction of that. Disjunction says that um, it's only going to be, it's going to be true if there's at least one true, one truth, truth value. Or and the contrary for that, in opposite, if we're going to look at it in an opposite perspective, it's only going to be false if both of them are false. So, we can see that um, both of them are true, or rather, there's at least one true. They're not, not both of them are false. That's going to be true. Oops. Let me fix that. Um, there's at least one true here. So hence, it's true. 
So we can see true there already. So that's going to be true no matter what. That's also going to be true because there's two. Here we can see that both of them are false. So therefore, this time it's going to be false. And also here, both of them are false. Therefore, it's going to be false. Seeing the two truths here will let us write it as true since they're all true. Now, we will consider um, this one. P or not Q, which is the fifth column. We're going to imply it to R. R is here. So again, um, our implication tells us that it's going to be false if we have uh, an arrangement of TF, true true hypothesis false conclusion because if our again if our hypothesis is true our conclusion cannot be false so if we have a arrangement which is tf true hypothesis false conclusion that's going to be false for our implication so let's start we'll start here going here okay so we'll start here looking at the r so technically if this is a blackboard we will be covering some stuff okay so that we won't be so that we won't be um um Confused, conf uh, be confused with the lots of, of columns here. Actually, there are there are even longer, longer um, compound propositions that we will be taking, and then uh, which requires more longer tables. So, um, be careful and do not be, um, do not, uh, do not be confused. My goodness. So we have true, true. So therefore, it's going to be true. What we have here is true, false. So this is our the arrangement that we are looking for so that's going to give us false we have true true so that's true we have true false that's false um we have here two false so by true true by default that's both both of them will be true true by default we have true true that's true and we have true false which makes it false so what is our answer true false true false true 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 false so it depends really on the statement. Um, what will be the on what will be the truth value of this? So, for instance, what is the meaning of this, sir? For instance, um, you know that your first proposition is uh, let's focus here. Okay, you know that your first proposition is false. Okay, you also know that your um second proposition is true and your third proposition is true. So, meaning we are looking at this false true true what is the truth value if i'm going to input it here if if the if the operation will be like this therefore its truth value will be true meaning whatever p q and r we have given this truth values of the individual p q and r the value of this compound proposition will be true okay another example um say we have this one um true true false so our first proposition is true, our second proposition is true, but our last proposition is false. Um, it, if we're going to put this in this operation, in this logical operation, the value, the truth value is going to be false. Whatever P, Q, and R statements are, whatever the statements are, um, provided that the last statement is false and the first two are true, therefore P or not Q implies R is going to be false. Okay? And if this is the case, there's it, there, all of, well, I mean, the answer is diverse. It's composed of true and false um, truth values. It's not all true, which is a tautology. It's not all false, which is a contradiction. But it's a combination. We call this a contingency. Contended. Contingency. Okay. So if it's a combination of true and false, there's no domination of all true nor all false. Okay. Again, all true are tautology. All true uh, all false are uh, is what we call a contradiction. If it's combination, we call it a contingency. And usually, we will we will see contingencies in our answers. Okay. So that's it for our example number four in our in our slides. Looking again at example number four. Sorry, that's pretty big. Looking again for example number four. This is what we have. So. P or not Q implies R. It's a contingency, and our answer is TF, TF, TT, TF. So just imagine that as a as a vertical table, a vertical column. Okay, so let's move on, and the last, the next parts will actually be your exercises. Um, determine the truth values of the following propositions. Um, that is making use of truth tables. Um, I will give this as an assignment. Um, I will be creating a future future videos about this. 
um, to see or to let you see the answers for these um, exercises. So notice that each of them have three variables. So it's going to be three or eight rows per table. That's going to be quite long, but I believe you can do that. Okay, you can do that. And that will be the end of our operations and propositions in the mathematics of in the modern world uh, playlist. Uh, our focus again in these two videos is that are the truth tables. Hopefully you learned something from by the end of this video. So um, that's it for now. Um, thank you very much for watching and I hope that you will subscribe. Okay, thank you very much.